Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 22nd of March. Three terrorists neutralized in separate encounters in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Death toll climbs to at least 14 in building collapse in southern India. And Afghan president reiterates call for timely elections. And now for all the details. At least three terrorists were gunned down by the security forces in two separate encounters in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province, officials said on Friday. India accuses neighbouring Pakistan of aiding and infiltrating terrorists to mount attacks on Indian soil. Pakistan denies the allegations. At least three terrorists were gunned down by the security forces in two separate encounters in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province in two days. One terrorist was eliminated by the security forces in Imam Sahib area of Shopian district on Friday in a joint operation by Indian Army, Central Reserve Police Force and Jammu and Kashmir Police. In another encounter on Thursday, the security forces neutralized two terrorists in Hajin area of Bandipura district of the province. Huge cache of arms and ammunition was also recovered from the possession of the terrorists. And finally, when, when the fire from that side intensified, we also retaliated. And in process, uh, two militants, one, one Ali, uh, I mean these all are aliases, uh, we don't know their actual name, but Elias, uh, Ali and Hubeib were, uh, were eliminated. India accuses neighbouring Pakistan of regularly arming and infiltrating terrorists across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Pakistan denies the allegations. A court in Indian capital New Delhi on Friday sent Sajad Khan, an alleged terrorist of Pakistan-based Jaish e Mohammed terror group, to National Investigation Agency or NIA custody till March 29th. He is believed to be the key aid of mastermind of the deadly terror attack, which killed at least 40 security personnel in India's Jammu and Kashmir on February 14. A court in Indian capital New Delhi on Friday sent alleged terrorists of Pakistan-based Jaish Muhammad terror group Sajad Khan to National Investigation Agency or NIA custody till March 29th. Believed to be a key aide of Mudassir Khan, the alleged mastermind of the deadly Pulwama terror attack, Sajad Khan, was arrested by the special cell of the Delhi police on Thursday. The police claimed that Sajad Khan was constantly in touch with Mudassir Khan during the terror strike in Pulwama district of India's Jammu and Kashmir in February. Mudassir Khan had been gunned down in an encounter with security forces in India's Jammu and Kashmir on March 11. Huge quantities of ammunition and automatic weapons were found during the encounter. At least 40 personnel of India's Central Reserve Police Force were killed in Pulwama in the ghastly suicide bomb attack claimed by Pakistan-based Jashri Muhammad terror group. India has long accused Pakistan of harboring terror groups to use them as proxy to mount attacks on Indian soil. Pakistan denies the charges. The death toll in the under-construction mall collapse climbed to at least 14 on Friday, nearly 60 hours after it collapsed in India's southern Dharwad district. Rescue operations were still underway till the last reports came in as more than a dozen people were still missing. The death toll in the under construction mall collapse climbed to more than 13 on Friday, nearly 60 hours after it collapsed in India's southern Dharwad district. A senior police official confirmed the number of casualties and added that more than a dozen people were still missing. A man was pulled alive by India's National Disaster Response Force or NDRF personnel from under the rubble. About 400 NDRF personnel meanwhile continued to dig through the rubble to search for more survivors. Total 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 तो सुबह सुबह कल सुबह हमने दो बजे तक दोन लोगों दो लोगों को रिट्रीव किया था 
और तीन डेड बॉडीज़ कल दो पैर हमने रिट्रीव किया था और उसके बाद दो पैर से कल तक और तीन या चार लोग हमने निकाला है According to local media reports the building was under construction for the past 2 years there is no official confirmation yet on the reason behind the collapse that happened on Tuesday evening all four owners have surrendered before the police and the engineer has been taken into police custody Moving on Secretary General of World Sindhi Congress Lakhu Luhana recently highlighted the atrocities being committed by the Pakistani security forces in the Sindh province. He urged the international community to intervene and demanded that the United Nations should send a fact-finding commission to Sindh to probe the violations. Secretary General of World Sindhi Congress Lakhu Luhana recently highlighted the atrocities being committed by the Pakistani security forces in the Sindh province. During the recent UNHRC session in Geneva, he along with other prominent political and human rights activists raised the issue of abductions and forced disappearances and extrajudicial killings being committed by Pakistani army to muzzle dissenting voices in the province. Luhana urged the international community to intervene and take cognizance of the situation. He demanded that the United Nations should send a fact-finding commission to Sindh to probe the violations. From 1st of January 19 to 21st of February, there have been 20 disappearances just these less than 2 months. And that makes about 10 persons per month. That that's the situation. Sindhi activists have for long been requesting the international community to take notice of the violence inflicted by Pakistan against their peaceful struggle. They accuse that there is significant poverty, malnutrition, displacement and deaths in Sindh and those who raise their voice against the atrocities are abducted and killed. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani on Thursday stressed on timely presidential election while speaking during Nowruz celebrations in Balkh province. His remarks came a day after the election commission announced September 28 as the new date for the presidential elections. Based on the previous timeline, the elections were supposed to be held on July 20th. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani on Thursday said presidential election is one of the most important events in the year 2019 and that the process should not face a further delay. He made the statement in Balkh province while addressing a ceremony to mark Persian New Year Nowruz which is widely celebrated in Afghanistan. While expressing hopes that the people will witness peace this year, Ghani said that Afghanistan is the heart of Asia. and a stable afghanistan is in favor of all regional countries janab rah guzar sahab khas apne bloz se tashakkur kar no more in the khas in budi asti wa khaib ghani stressed that peace should be long term not a peace which will lead to bloodshed war torn afghanistan has delayed its presidential election until september 28 Officials announced on Wednesday the second time the ballot has been put back and 5 months later than it was originally scheduled to be held. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. An official at the UN Refugee Agency UNHCR who recently interacted with Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh said that Rohingyas are grateful to their host country but they always long to return to their own country, Myanmar. Assistant High Commissioner for Protection at UN Refugee Agency UNHRC Volker Turk on Thursday said Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh are grateful to their host country but they always long to return to their own country Myanmar Turk shared his observations after his 5 day visit to a refugee settlement in Bangladesh where he interacted with Rohingya refugees and discussed how they see their futures evolve He also met with government officials in Bangladesh to review the challenges they are facing and discussed solutions for the development of conditions for voluntary, safe and dignified return of refugees to Myanmar. And I have to say when I had a chance to talk to refugees it was very clear that they feel very grateful to Bangladesh as well. I mean the Rohingyas were all telling us how grateful they feel about 
being here and about being able to find safety in this country. And I think that's a very important message from, from the population itself. More than 700,000 Rohingya fled a sweeping army crackdown in Myanmar's Rakhine province in 2017, launched in response to Rohingya insurgent attacks on the security forces. Though Myanmar says it is ready to welcome back the refugees, but the region from where they fled is still marred by ethnic tensions and violence, and the UN has said that conditions are not right for them to return. A fish hospital has been established in India's northern Jammu in Kashmir to provide treatment to the aquatic animals. The hospital is equipped with high-tech diagnostic facilities and medicines to control spreading of diseases among the aquatic species. A first-of-its-kind fish hospital has been established in Gandharbal district of India's northern Jammu in Kashmir to provide treatment to the aquatic animals and help breeders in increasing their production. The hospital has been started by the Sher A. Kashmir University of Agricultural Sciences and Technology to reduce the loss of life of the aquatic animals. The hospital has been equipped with high-tech diagnostic facilities and medicines to treat the fish and control the diseases from spreading among other aquatic species. जैसे फिशेस में आप देखो उनका एक ही हैबिटेट होता है एक पानी में वो सब रहते हैं और उसकी वजह से क्या है एक बीमारी अगर हो गई कंट्रैक्ट हो गई वो सबको फैल जाएगी और विद इन नो टाइम आपका बहुत ज्यादा नुकसान हो जाएगा लाइफ स्टॉक का तो हमने यहां पे इनिशिएटिव किया स्टार्ट जो फिश क्लिनिक का ये कांसेप्ट जो हमने स्टार्ट किया है इससे क्या है कि अगर कोई फार्मर अपना केस लेके आता है तो हम उसको एक ट्रीटमेंट भी देंगे हम आगे फॉलो अप भी करेंगे कि फर्दर इनको ये डिजीजेस ना हो ये बहुत अच्छा स्टेप है क्योंकि जब फार्मर्स को जब फिश डिजीज जो फिर फिश की जब डिजीज होती थी तो फिर उसमें वो ट्रीट नहीं कर पाता था तो फिश की डेथ होती थी तो प्रोडक्शन मतलब इस यहां पे कश्मीर में यही है कि प्रोडक्शन कम होती थी तो जब से ये फिश हॉस्पिटल खोले इससे बहुत सारी फिश जो जो फार्मर्स हैं उनका जो ये प्रॉब्लम है वो सॉल्व हुई है Pollution, reduce oxygen level in the water, parasites and infectious diseases are some of the reasons for the death of fish in water. Sikh devotees on Thursday gathered in India's northern Anandpur Sahib city to mark the celebrations of Hola Mohalla festival. Men dressed in traditional attires displayed their skills in ancient Sikh martial arts in a colorful ceremony organized to mark the celebrations. Sikh devotees from across India and abroad on Thursday congregated in India's northern Anandpur Sahib city to mark the celebrations of Hola Mahalla festival. Thousands of spectators turned up to watch men dressed in traditional attires displaying their skills in ancient martial arts known as Gatka. In a colourful ceremony organised at the Sikh shrine, Takht Shri Kesgar Sahib Gurdwara. It was in Anandpur Sahib that the 10th Sikh Guru, Guru Gobind Singh, founded the Khalsa Panth or the Sikh Order in 1699 to counter the Mughal Empire during its heyday. The festival coincides with the Festival of Colours, Holi, which was also celebrated across India with great zeal and fervour on Thursday. Holi Mahalleda Tuhar, Takht Shri Keskar Sahib Ji Vikhe Smucha Khalsa Panth Ji Katr Ho Karke ਜਦ ਤੋਂ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਇਹ ਤਿਉਹਾਰ ਦੀ ਆਰੰਭਤਾ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਉਦੋਂ ਤੋਂ ਹੀ ਸਮੁੱਚਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਪੰਥ ਇਸ ਧਰਤੀ ਤੇ ਇਕੱਤਰ ਹੋ ਕੇ ਔਰ ਬੜੀ ਚੜ੍ਹਦੀ ਕਲਾ ਬੜੇ ਉਲਾਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਬੜੇ ਚਾਹ ਨਾਲ ਇਸ ਤਿਉਹਾਰ ਨੂੰ ਇਸ ਧਰਤੀ ਤੇ ਮਨਾਉਂਦਾ ਆ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਫੈਂਟਾਸਟਿਕ ਏਵਰੀਬਾਡੀ ਇਜ਼ ਵੈਰੀ ਮੱਚ ਇੰਜੋਇੰਗ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਦ ਕਲਚਰ ਇਜ਼ ਬਿਊਟੀਫੁਲ ਮੋਨੂਮੈਂਟ ਬਿਊਟੀਫੁਲ ਐਂਡ ਬੈਸਟ ਆਫ ਆਲ ਇਜ਼ ਦ ਪੀਪਲ ਇਜ਼ ਵੈਰੀ ਬਿਊਟੀਫੁਲ Meanwhile in northern Amritsar city to mark the celebrations devotees also offered prayers at the Golden Temple the holiest shrine of Sikhism Hola Mahalla commemorates the transformation of the Sikh community into a martial fraternity by Guru Gobind Singh the 10th guru or spiritual leader of the Sikh community Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at @sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.